just pray for her that um, she has made a profession of faith as well. So, that, but just pray for her um, at this time. Anyway, Second um, Thessalonians uh, chapter two. By the way, just so you know, yes. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. We'll do that. Listen, men, I want, I would, I'm sorry, you go ahead, brother. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I want to pray with you men after lunch before I leave, okay? I know you had planned to do that a little bit later, but um, if we could do that before I leave, I'd like you to pray for the meeting. I'd like you to pray one for another and us to do that, okay, uh, before we leave. Yeah. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. <clears throat> begging for prayer. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. That's right. It's a good admonition, brother. Thank you. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two, please. Both files are running, right, brother? Okay. Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two. If you didn't hear the first message, you should listen to it uh, on the spirit of Antichrist. If you've not heard that yet from Wednesday night, I would encourage you to listen to that. Um, incidentally. And you never you just preach what God wants you to preach, but as strange as saying that has like a hundred and thirty five downloads already since putting that on Wednesday night. So the Lord must be using that in people's lives, uh, you know, for for something. And I know He used it in mine because some of those things I've been experiencing and everything. But I want to continue on with that thought here uh, this this morning here and uh, really uh, talk about this, the spirit of Antichrist, part two. I want to talk to you about the charismatic movement a little bit. The reason why is because if you understand the spirit of Antichrist, if you understand that he's out there, that spirit is already out there. It's already at work. It's already doing that work, preparing for the Antichrist to come on the scene. It's working right now. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse number one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. It's interesting. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The falling away. I think, I, think, I think we're in that time. I think you're seeing a falling away. It's amazing, isn't it? The son of perdition. Now that is the Antichrist, the son of perdition is. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. I'm not even going to get to that today, but I will when I get back. Because that's... That right there is a, is, is a very loaded verse right there. Uh, it'll explain the times a lot better. Uh, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. Notice the capital? God. See that? Mm -hmm. Or that is worshipped. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. What is that, Spirit of Antichrist? He said it's already at work. It's at work right now. What is the mystery of godliness? God manifests in the flesh, right? Justified in the Spirit. Seen of angels. Preached on and received up into glory. Amen? I, I didn't read the whole verse, but... But uh, that's the gist of that verse there. That's what happened. 
He's in heaven. Amen. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now it describes his coming, even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan. What is that? That's that spirit who's after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Now, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let's pray. Father, we need you, Lord. We need you badly. Lord, all these words that have been said here uh, with the local church, the body, the, the message Brother Russ preached, Lord, uh, that mini-sermon that was not really planned to be, Lord, uh, on husbands and wives. And Lord, even now, this, dear God, open our eyes. Open our understanding. Break hearts, Lord. Use, Father. Fill us. Heal us, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. He says here, Even so whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That is the spirit of the charismatic movement. That's the spirit of it. That's what that is. That, that, that's what you're seeing today. You say, yeah, but they're not really. Now, some of them have healed and done some weird things uh, in the past. Most of them are, but what does it say here? It says, lying signs and wonders. That spirit of Antichrist that we looked at in 1 John, if you haven't heard that message, please go back and listen to it. It'll help you understand this a little bit better. But in 1 John, he said that that spirit is already in the world. It's already there. It's already out there, already working. What's it doing? It's preparatory work. It's prepping the world to receive the Antichrist. The religious crowd to receive the Antichrist. Amen. Notice it says the Antichrist spirit is the spirit of false prophets. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out of the world. How do we try the spirits? See this King James Bible? This is how you try the spirits. For many false prophets have went out. It says many. You see that? What is the charismatic movement? Many false prophets. Not just them, by the way, but... We're going to focus in on them today. I want you to understand this thing of lying signs and wonders. Amen? Now, now understand, I'm not saying that the Antichrist is here right now and he's on the scene and we're, we all know it. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the spirit of Antichrist is already out there. What is he doing? The same work that he'd be doing if he was here. What work does the Holy Spirit do? The same work that Jesus would do if he was here. He would work in you. He would work with you. He would give you his power. All right, we understand the difference in the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. But, uh, but his influence would be here, just like he influenced his men, just like he preached everywhere, amen? What does that spirit of Antichrist do? Lying signs and wonders. Same work, only when he's manifest here, whoa, big difference when he comes on the scene. Because he'll have his full power and his ability from God that God allows him to have to be able to do this. Don't you misunderstand it. God allows him to do what he's going to do. He does. Because if God wanted to stop it, just like that he does. Amen. We're to test everything with the word of God to see if they're, if they're accurate, these prophets. We're to test them by the word of God. Amen. Your charismatics will tell you, hey, you need to get slain in the spirit. Then, of course, you ask them to show you in the Scriptures, where do you find being the children of God were slain in the Spirit, like you're talking about? You won't find that in the King James Bible. It's not in there. No, it's not. What is it? A lying sign and wonder? The only Spirit that you find slaying anything is the Antichrist Spirit damning people to a devil's hell through their refusal to believe on Christ. That's what you see. That's who gets slain. 
the deceived lost that get strong delusion that they should all believe a lie, that they all might be damned that believe not the truth. These charismatics have another spirit. By the way, when I get done with this teaching, you'll understand this better, but that's why no professing charismatic that has ever spoken tongues is allowed to be a member unless they publicly renounce that, and they've repented of that, and they show a pattern of good works. They're not allowed in here. No, they're not. Why? It's another spirit. It's not the same spirit. It's another spirit. And I'm telling you something right now. If you ever met a woman that spoke in tongues, you ain't... you. You'll be hard-pressed to get that devil out of them. I'm telling you, you'll be hard-pressed to get that devil out of them. I've, I've never seen any woman, I've never personally met one that spoke in tongues like that that ever relinquishes that or walks away from it. No, nope, I haven't personally. Now, I'm not saying they're not out there. I'm saying I haven't personally. Are these charismatics, they say, uh, they say oh, that, that speaking in tongues is evidence of being born again. You know, I find that fascinating. You know why I find that so fascinating? Because some of the greatest revivals that ever took place in the history of this world, none of the preachers ever spoke tongues. Never. Not once. The Great Awakening, Jonathan Edwards, George Whitfield, the Wesley Boys, Shubal Stearns, the Sandy Creek Revival. Not one of them ever spoke in tongues and gave evidences of being born again by speaking in tongues. Not one of them. So are we to believe that men like Charles Spurgeon and those other men that saw the mighty works of God and saw many people saved and lives changed, they, well, they just didn't have it. They, they just, those guys just didn't know. They just weren't filled with the Spirit, that's all. Oh, yeah, I know. That's, that's why they could preach and see men fall on their faces. And Jonathan Edwards, they were gripping the pulpit. They were gripping their pews and thinking they were going to slip off into hell, weeping and crying and howling. These people, these, these of the Antichrist spirit, they've... They're looking for a sign, like we talked about, Matthew 12, 39. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He said, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. The Word of God, this King James Bible, and the preaching of it is the sign that you, that you receive, friend. This is what you need right here. This is what you've been given, everything. You've been given it all right here with this. And guess what? It's in a language you can read. <laughs> That's something. You know, I, you don't need a commentary. I've got books. You don't need, anything. You don't need a Hebrew lexicon. You don't need a dictionary. You just need the Holy Ghost and this. Yeah. That's what he said. He said he will teach you all things. That's what he said. Huh. So when you're asking me that I need all those other things and I need that sign and I need those things, you're of another spirit. That's an antichrist spirit. That's right. And for this cause... You think these people, these false, these false prophets today that push a prosperity gospel whose God is their belly, it's all about them making money, that they do these, their deceitful miracles and signs? What is it? It's a precursor to the Antichrist. It's that spirit that went out. It's anything that gets you off the gospel, anything that gets you off this book and gets you looking for some sign somewhere else. Why? Because he's going to come with lying signs and wonders. So they want you to look for a sign. No, you look at the printed page. You look at the Word of God. You look at the King James Bible. You look here for your answer. It's all right here. You don't need that. You don't need those signs. You don't need those at all. Why? And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You go to a charismatic church, they don't care if you get saved. They're more concerned with you speaking in tongues and slaying you in the Spirit. That's what they're concerned with. That's what their goal is. They want to slay you in the Spirit. 
You say, why do you got to preach about this? Because maybe you might know somebody that's in the charismatic movement. That's why. Maybe you might be out on the street if you ever thought about going out and preaching the gospel. Maybe you might be out there on the street sometime, and you might run across people like that. You going to have an answer for them? Or are they going to walk away saying, well, you're just not filled with the Spirit, and you don't have any answer for it? I'm going to start talking about a little bit of things here. This will be interesting to you. What they want to do is pop you in that, what they call the third eye. Now, they don't call it that. They call it something else. But, uh, but, but from Kabbalah and from Kundalini, what you see is from the devil, they want to open you up to a spirit world. They want to open you up to an antichrist. They want to, they want, I'm not going to hit you in the head, really. But, uh, but uh, there's that penal gland right there, right? And they want to strike that there. And many have given testimony, which I'm going to show you, that when they get struck by that, there, there's like a, light, there's like a, a, um, a shock. There's like a, an electric, electric shock that comes through there when they do that. I'm going to read you some very interesting things here. Now, it's not Manly Hall's secret teachings of all ages, Brother Russ, but, uh, but it, it's, it's not too far off of that. Uh, but uh, I, I want to read you something because I want you to understand something. What is this all? It's all the spirit of Antichrist. Where is it coming from? Well, I'm going to read you something that is exactly what they're trying to do when they pop you in the forehead, what they tell you, and I'm going to show you what what Hinduism says, or what yoga says, and what the charismatic movement says. And I'm going to show you that it's exactly the same spirit. Same thing. They want to do the same thing to you. They want to do what they are doing. They want to do that to you. That's what they want. They want to do that to you. So I'm going to show you what it is. I'm going to read something to you here from, from, this, uh, from this website here. He says here, if you wish to... Now, this is, this is from a, a third eye... Uh, spiritual world um, opening you up to this this new enlightenment, this new understanding. Oh, it's going to open you up to this new. You're going to see things that you've never seen before, and you're going to be sensitive to things you, you never. And you're going to be you're going to feel the spirit, and you're going to do all this. You know, I had some weird Baptists say a few things to me about after they got baptized. They were talking like that and saying that they they could see things that they never saw before. Moving right along. Listen to this. It's too real to make up, brother. The third eye is directly related to the sixth chakra, the psychic chakra, located on the middle of the forehead above the brows. It is closely associated with the penile gland. The penile gland is dormant in most people, as is the true third eye. French philosopher René Descartes believed the penal gland to be the seat of the soul. Ooh, it's going to get weird. Where mind and body meet. In the average person, the penal gland is atroph atrophied or calcified. Probably saying that wrong, but calcified anyway, and dormant. The following exercise will change that. Please read this thoroughly, as much as the exercise I write of are very advanced and can cause problems if one does not do them correctly. Now, this is not a charismatic. This is the third eye, but I want to show, I'm going to show you what they're trying to do here. You think, it's, you think it's not odd that Freemasonry has used being slain? Like Hiram Abiff, Brother Russ, you've talked about that a little bit, and I've talked about that. The same slaying takes place. The same striking takes place. The same people there. Here we go. Please read this thoroughly. He says you can do this, you know. The penile gland is like a pea in, in, in size. Like a shriveled raisin is mo in most people where it remains dormant. Faster, easier learning and retention come from it. When you open this up, here's what they're saying. Now listen, you're going to catch this in a second. Marked increase in intuition. Haven't you ever heard charismatics talk like that? You just don't have that opened up to you because you've never been slain in the Spirit and you've never been filled with the Spirit and spoken in tongues, so you, don't, you just don't understand it. You don't understand it yet. Once you experience it, you'll understand it. Are you catching this? Please listen closely. Increased creativity. When you open up that third eye, you'll have increased creativity. Psychic gifts develop and become markedly, markedly... Oh, by the way, I didn't read how they do it. I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm just reading. 
I'm not going to do that, but anyway. Uh, and become mar markedly stronger, along with more developed ability to see or sense human auras. Now, listen to me. I had a pastor once that went to this lady, and this lady could look at you, oh, and she can just look at you, and she could just see your aura around you, and she could just feel your... She ain't feeling nothing on me, man. <laughs> you leave my chakra aura, whatever you call it, alone. All right? But she could feel that around you because she could see and feel where the energy is blocked. Some people called her a witch doctor. I agree. I think she's a devil too. That didn't make me very many friends. I got threatened when I said that, by the way. That's what the devil does, though. He threatens you to shut you up. Just remember that. That's how that works. Psychic gifts develop. Clairvoyance. Psychic vision opens up. Clairaudience. Psychic hearing opens up. Is that anything like this, your spider sense tingling? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Brother I remember that. <laughs> Clairsentience, psychic feeling, touching opens up. That's the whole aura chakra thing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard charismatics say, "If you just you just never experienced that baptism of the Holy Spirit, you just don't know the feeling and the enlightenment that comes from it." God shows us visions and hearings, and when you are a slave of the Spirit, you just have to experience it. You never heard him say that? Oh God! I had a lady one time. I went to this. It was like a thrift shop inside of an old church building. I remember I told you about this before, but I, I went in this building, and you know, I was just—I didn't know she was in there, man. She was spooky. Um, and she goes, "I—I I see a lot of children in your future." <laughs> what are you talking about, lady? You're scaring me. Oh, I just—I see a lot of that. I see—I see your wife doing and all this stuff. I'm like, you didn't see nothing, lady. Get out of here. She was called. She was like a Christian. She said she was a Pentecostal, and she saw visions. You never heard him say that? They use Joel, and they say you'll see visions and you'll dream dreams and you'll, you know, you, you'll have the you'll have all this power and you'll see all these things. Why? Well, see, Kundalini and those others, they say if you just open up that third eye, you'll do the same thing. So then you've got Benny Hinn and all these guys popping people on the forehead. They're smacking people up on the forehead and hitting them in their third eye. Why? Because they're trying to give them another spirit. You just have to experience it. It's the spirit of Antichrist, folks. It's exactly what they are. They are devils preaching a devil's gospel to pervert the doctrines of Christ. That's their desire. As he will come in the flesh, their spirit, the spirit is already at work. It's a game to them. The charismatic movement is not different than the satanic cults. The spirit of Antichrist has been sent out before to prepare that lying spirit, that lying way. Consider the following similarities. Listen to this. Hindu gurus and African spiritism and the charismatic movement all do this same thing. Slain in the spirit, electric shock, physical jerks, animal sounds, new revelations, surge of energy, ecstatic speech, trances, visions, and uncontrollable laughing. All of it. They all do the same thing. They all do that. Do you understand that they're all the same spirit? They're teaching, it's witchcraft. They're wrapping up a, a false message. They're trying to include Christ into their witchcraft. Because the Christ that they're including is the Antichrist. Not Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's not. Not the risen Lord. That's not who it is. There's one page called the third eye. The, the open third eye is also known as the middle eye of Shiva, the eye of Horus. Oh, well, where have you seen the eye of Horus at before? Your money, your dollar bill. Well, they want to open up that third eye in you. Right, they want to enlighten you. They want to get that third eye opened up for you. And the horn of the unicorn, the temple of Mott in early Egypt, was dedicated to the process of opening the third eye. The third eye is an etheric or fourth dimensional eye. 
Now, why would they want to open a fourth dimensional eye for you to see in the fourth dimension? Because that's what's coming, friend. That's that fourth kingdom that's coming. That's that spirit world that's coming. That's what it is. That's what it's about. So you can see into that spirit world. See, God can show you things. He does it through his word now. That's how he does it, right? This is the completed revelation, right? You believe that, don't you? This is it. This is all you need. It's everything. Amen. Now, before he spoke by his prophets in the past, and he showed them visions, didn't he? He showed them things. What did he show Elijah? He showed his servant. He showed him into the fourth dimension. Look at that. Look at all those chariots there. He opened up. God did that. That's holy then. They're doing it by the power of Satan. That's what they're doing. That's how they're doing it. It acts as a sensitive receiver and transmitter, this third eye, by which vibrations of many different types can be translated. Remember the vibration I said that the, the people that said that, I, I was reading it online. The man said, he said he was at a, 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 I forget what the name of the charismatic guy was, but the guy hit him in the head and he said, I did feel the vibration. I did and I fell back. I felt it. It was real. The vibration was real. I believe you. I believe you too. But it's not of God. It's of the devil. And you're doing exactly what these cults are doing. Different types can be translated, interpreted, and dispersed into our third dimensional brains to gain wisdom and illumination. Through this eye, inner planes, thought forms, and higher entities are perceived. Are you catching that? Higher entities are perceived. A better sense of cause and effect is also acquired. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't need to see anything like that. We have the Word of God. We have the King James Bible. We have. We don't need anything else. We've got it. We have the Holy Spirit abiding in us. We don't need anything else. All eyes need a lens to give meaning to a perceived light sensation, including the third eye. The third eye's lens is located in our aura just in front of our sixth chakra. The psychic construction of this lens is part of the discipline that leads to an accurate perception with our inner eye. By using this point in our aura, between our eyes and in the center of our forehead, as a focal point during meditation, we can facilitate the development of our third eye's lens. Using this form of meditation also facilitates theta wave consciousness. It's another spirit. It's a lying sign and wonder. It's what the Antichrist is preparing for, and the charismatic movement is full of it. Absolutely full of it. And they want to come into your churches, and they want to do Bible studies, and they want to come, and they want to spread their word, and they want to see you filled with the Spirit. I had a lady say that to me once. Well, Baptists, they're not filled with the Spirit. She was a charismatic lady. I was thinking to myself, yeah, not your spirit, lady. For some reason, charismatic ladies get mad at me. I don't know what it is, but they, they like to argue with me. and get. I mean, one lady, I told you guys about that one lady one time when I was, I was out knocking doors, and this lady, this charismatic lady took my Bible and wouldn't give it back to me. She, she took my Bible and she said, I'm going to show you something here. I said, oh, okay. And I just, I let her, you let her do it, you know, because she was arguing with me a little bit back and forth. And I wasn't trying to get, I, I don't argue doctrine like that with you. I don't do that. And I, I wasn't, so I wasn't really trying to do that, but she wouldn't give me my Bible back. She just kept it. And she was like, wow, I was like, lady, give me my Bible back. I want to go. I don't want to sit here and talk to you. And, and she just kept going. Man, she got mad at me. Oh, she got mad at me. And, and then the other lady on the phone got mad at me. And she said, well, you just don't understand. You're just not filled with the spirit. You know, it's fucking times. I said, lady, we wouldn't even let you in here. Because first of all, if anybody's going to do any teaching, I'm going to be teaching you. You ain't teaching me. Woo-wee. Well, that devil came out of her. Right through that third eye, I'm telling you. Right through the phone, man. She was mad. Yeah, yeah, she was, she, she, yeah, she was, she was, she was, she was upset. They get mad. They get mad. Why? Because when you bring Bible into that eh, stuff, in the Bible, knock it off, lady. Gibberish, you're speaking, is demonic. Now listen to this. We're almost done. The Kundalini refers to the dormant power or energy present in every human being, and lying like a coiled serpent in the etheric body at the base of the spine. 
that coiled serpent down there. This coiled serpent has been bidding its time for ages. Do you, do you, are, you, are you listening? Are you, are you hearing what I'm hearing? Who's the coiled serpent, Brother Russ? That's right. And he's been abiding his time for ages. This is what they're teaching in Kundalini. But it's no different. The charismatics teach the same thing. I'm going to show you that in a second. This coiled serpent has been biding its time for ages, waiting for the day when the soul would begin to take charge of its right, rightful domain, the personality, or the combination of the physical, astral, and mental bodies. The spiritual force, while still asleep, is the static form of creative energy which serves to vitalize the whole body. When awakened and beginning to uncoil, this electric, fiery force proves to be a spiral nature and hence a symbolic description of serpent power. They're telling you what's going to happen. They're telling you. As the kundalini force is aroused, it will steadily increase the vibratory action of the etheric centers and consequently also that of the physical, astral, and mental bodies through which the vital body finds expression. This animating activity will have a dual effect, Firstly, by eliminating all that is coarse and unsuitable from the lower vehicles, and secondly, by absorbing it into its sphere of influence, those, those lofty qualities which will serve to raise the energy content of the vital body of the evolving individual. Do you see that? One of the objects of activating the spiral fire and its progress up the spine to the head is to awaken the penile gland, which again results in the opening of the third eye and the consequent revelation of the subtler planes of spiritual life. You warn your family and you warn people, don't go to those charismatic, don't go to those people that do the slaying and the spirit stuff. You stay away from that stuff. They want to give you another spirit. That's what they're about. That's what they're trying to do. This will ensure a simultaneous and parallel awakening of the etheric force centers and dormant forces at the base of the spine. When this process is carried forward with care and under suitable direction, the awakening will take its course gradually and normally and without incurring any danger. I want you to consider something. And we're, By the way, we're almost done, I promise you. We are. Um, David Cloud said this on the charismatic movement. You all know who David Cloud is? Many of you do anyway. Anyway, hundreds of people came forward on Friday night. He went to one of these charismatic meetings as a reporter and sat there. He just listened. Hundreds of people came forward on Friday night in St. Louis to have hands laid on them by the speakers, and many of them fell under the power and lay on the concrete floor of the convention center, some of them for a half hour and more. As Hills and John Kilpatrick, pastor of the Brownsville Assembly of God in Pensacola, laid hands on people, they yelled, fire, fire, some of the... Oops, so, so, some of those laying on the floor rolled around and some shook. Some laughed almost hysterically. Remember what we said in Kundalini? Remember what we said in the third eye? Remember what they do? Remember that? We just said that. They do this. They, some shook. Some laughed almost hysterically. Some wept. Some smiled blissfully. And some appeared to be unconscious. The Saturday morning session led by John and Carol Arnott from the Toronto Canada is another key illustration of the focus on spirit slang. Arnott spoke for a few minutes, then invited pastors to come forward if they felt they would die if they did not soon receive a touch from God. He told them to say to God, Why not me and why not now? I take it in the name of Jesus. About 40 or 50 went up front, and John Arnott and his wife laid hands on them. Most of them fell on the floor. One continued standing, but he started shaking almost violently and remained like that for a long time until Carol Arnott laid hands on him and he fell to the floor. Have you, by the way, you ever seen the scriptures where a woman lays hands on a man? Did you ever see that? Anybody ever see that? Where a woman lays hands on a man? Only Jezebel. Only that Jezebel spirit. She wants to lay hands, don't she? Only, only Mystery Babylon. Yeah. Only the strange woman. Remember her? She grabbed him and she took him. What's that? The cult. After lying hands on the pastor, 
And while most of them were still on the floor, Arnot continued delivering his message to the crowd in his quiet manner. But as he was speaking, his wife roamed around laying hands on people and ministering to those who were lying on the floor. It was very confusing to say the least. Some people were laughing hysterically. Some were rolling around. Others were weeping and moaning very loudly. Carol Arnott was talking and yelling, and, and all the while John was rambling on about how the Holy Spirit was preparing to send the greatest revival in history. We ain't seen it yet, Jack. From time to time he would pause in the midst of speaking and would shout, Fire, fire on her, fire on him, fire Lord. It's interesting when you talk about that fire. Brother Russ, that, that, that flame, that spark, that series that, that we were listening to, you and I, it's, I'll show you guys later where you can see that, but it, it's interesting. He would continue speaking to the crowd as if nothing had happened. Now listen, in the Bible, believers sometimes fell down before Christ to worship him. Amen. Did you know nobody touched them? The disciples fell down on their faces and were afraid at the Mount of Transfiguration. The men who took Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane went backward and fell down when he spoke the words, I am he. By the way, that was all God. It wasn't some man doing it. And it certainly wasn't some woman doing it. The only thing that lady reminds me of is that prophet Jezebel that seduced my servants. You know, she really, this lady, this Arnott lady, she really had a desire, and so did Catherine, Kath, Catherine Kuhlman and a few of those other women, they have, Paula White, they have a desire to put their hands on men for some reason, and preachers for some reason. They have that desire. Hmm. Saul fell down to the ground when the Lord appeared to him on the road to Damascus. Does any of this sound like what charismatics do? Try the spirits, friend. Ananias fell down when he was stricken of God for his sin. John fell at Christ's feet as dead. It's all at the presence of God, by the way. Not some huckster out there making a buck. These prophets are deceitful. They need to be tried to see whether they are of God because many false prophets have went out. Other things that they do, and we'll be we're closing here, but other things they do is this, these healing, healing seminars, right? The healing, charismatic movement, they say healing is in the atonement. By the way, healing is not promised in the atonement. God never promised you that you would not die here of physical ailments. God never promised you that in his atonement he would heal your flesh. No, he saves your soul for all of eternity, amen? He never promised. The atonement doesn't save your flesh. Your flesh will have to be redeemed one day. It will have to be made new one day. Amen. We'll have to put off this old body, amen? But in the late 1940s, Kuhlman began to teach that physical healing was provided in the atonement of Jesus Christ. In 1947, she preached... By the way, she laid hands on Benny Hinn. In 1947, she preached that the miracles of the Pentecost would be, should be experienced today, claiming that Christians today are able to perform the same miracles as Jesus performed, and even greater miracles. Every church should be experiencing the miracles of Pentecost. Every church should be seeing healings of the book of Acts. She published a, published a book entitled, The Lord's Healing Touch. For the knowledge of the truth, look toward Jesus of Nazareth, who himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. If Jesus took our sickness, we need not bear them any longer. Sickness is a part of the curse, and Jesus came to destroy the curse. And our stead, because he did not want us to suffer disease. He took our specific diseases and infirmities upon his own sinless, perfect body in complete payment for the penalty of sin. That's a lie. Others of these healers say, I know it's God's highest wish for you to be in health. How do you know? Maybe God wants you to die and go to heaven tomorrow. How do you know he wants to heal you? Where do you get that from the scriptures that every man's going to be healed? You see why you've got to try the spirits? What do you try it with? This. Because this never fails. Your judgment fails. Your understanding, your feelings, your emotions fail. This doesn't fall doesn't fail. Sickness, he says here, he says here um, sickness is of the devil. God has never used sickness to discipline his children. Really? I don't care how old we are. 
It's his will to take us home healed, well, whole, and delivered. Kenneth Copeland. Um, how about the case of Timothy? Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. It wasn't God's will to heal him, was it? 1 Timothy 5.23 deals with Timothy was sick. He had quite a bit of infirmities. How about the case of Trophimus? Erastus, Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus, have I left him alive, him sick. He didn't get healed. Why? That's right. Yeah, that's what they'll say. You don't have enough faith. How about Paul? Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me. Did I say that right, Brother Russ? <laughs> Lest I should be exalted above measure, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Wait, he had infirmities? He's an apostle. Why would he have infirmities? He could just heal him. No, it wasn't God's will to heal everything. He asked the Lord three times, Lord, take it away from me. No, he says, My grace is sufficient for thee. I'm not going to take it away from you. How come TBN's Paul Crouch died of heart problems? He just died, the, the head of TBN, with his wife with pink hair, a weird scary lady with, it's like a makeup monster. Looks like somebody out of the WWF or something, or one of them big old female wrestlers or something. That's what it looks like. I mean, she's a scary lady, look at that clown. But uh, she does, look at her makeup, I ain't kidding ya. Am I lying? And pink hair and big old thick eye, you know, all this stuff on her face look like a clown coming at ya. You want to lay hands on you, brother. Stay away from me, little devil. But how come they, well, where was Benny at? That's what I want to know. Where was Paul White, Paula White? Oh, they were having an affair. That's where they were. I forgot. That's right. Those two were having an affair, those two evangelists. Um, where were they to lay hands on Paul Crouch so he didn't die? If they're, if they're healing, why do we have hospitals? If these guys are all healers, they should be walking around healing everybody right now. Why do we have anybody sick? Why does anybody die then? Why, does it, why, did, Paul, why did Paul Crouch die? Why did he die if he's healed? If the promise of the atonement is there, why did he die? Because it's a lie, that's why. It's a lying sign of wonder. And the King James Bible proved him wrong because he died. Do you understand that? God's word proved him wrong, and he died. Amen. They're all lying spirits. They're the spirit of Antichrist. Let them be tried by the King James Bible. Let it be known that they are of the spirit of Antichrist. Let it be known that charismatics are not allowed in this church because they're of, the, they're of another spirit. It's, a, it's the spirit of Antichrist. And they're doing the same thing that the cults are doing. They're bringing them in together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. Uh, Lord, help us to understand your word more and more every day. Help us to cling to it. Help us to try the spirits by it, Lord. The spirit of Antichrist is out there working today, preparing hearts for these lying signs and wonders, these lying healings that are going on. Lord, we believe in healing. We know you heal. You heal through prayer, and you will heal, Lord. We know that but it's not promised to us. It's not, and we know that to be true as well. It's not promised in the atonement, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you do save. And Lord, we pray, Father, that you bless this food to our bodies we're about to receive, bless the time we have together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.